Oh, I can I can totally make a defender deck work in legacy. <laughs> Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraven You here for another legacy video, and Plum Wizard gave me quite the challenge. Build a legacy deck featuring Arcades the Strategist. And although I pretty normally get videos out relatively quickly, like I've got I've got a decent wait time for a queue, but this one I sat on for a long time. I think I got this one at the tail end of December, and I just kind of ruminated on this one for a while, just trying to figure out what on earth I do with this one. So, Arcades is a 3-5 flying vigilance for 4 mana, which is understated by legacy standards. Whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control, you can draw a card, and each creature you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. And throughout Magic's lifespan, there have been a handful of effects similar to this one uh, with, what is it, Doran the Siege Tower? Yeah, nailed it, uh, being a notable one. Although there have been a number of other cards, such as Assault Formation or uh, High Alert is a white-blue version that kind of does the same thing. So... I took a long time in trying to figure out what I was going to want to do with this because I figured Arcades was going to be one of the worst cards in the deck, kind of whatever I did. Uh, this is something that Plum Wizard wants to see because like, they love the card. It is one of their favorite cards. But you know, how do I try to reasonably make this kind of fun idea with the defenders into something that is anywhere close to viable? And it took me a long time, but here's what I came up with. My biggest challenge was figuring out what is it that I actually do with all of the walls so that they do something when Arcades isn't around. And the biggest thing that I want to do with them is make mana. Both Axebane Guardian and Overgrown Battlement can make one mana for every creature with Defender that I control. And one of the things that I am going to do is try to just go infinite using wall mana. And we're going to go to a, a classic of legacy long since past, uh, which is Staff of Domination. So my goal is to be able to make five mana with an Axebane Guardian or an Overgrown Battlement, and then just go infinite. So I control five creatures with Defender, I make five mana, I untap, or, or I untap the creature, and then kind of go from there. So as long as I can do the three and the one, like I'm just good to go, I go infinite, and then I can kill my opponent with whatever. So I've got a couple of trophy mages in here to go and tutor for my Staff of Domination. But it's also going to tutor for Ensnaring Bridge. You know what my creatures with Defender sure as fuck don't have? Power. So... So that I can actually get to, like, five defenders and attempt to go infinite, I am going to be playing Ensnaring Bridge. Now, this is not going to be a perfect card in this deck, because, uh, air quotes, the good walls have the word draw a card stapled on them, and Arcades will also make us draw cards for our defenders. So, like, it's not perfect, but I think that's how we have a chance of stealing some number of games. We have an infinite combo outlet. We have the ability to just hide behind an ensnaring bridge and kind of buy time to win the game. And the thing that I think finally made me feel like I could actually reasonably play this deck for a video was discovering Walking Bulwark. So this is 0-3 Defender, and for 2 mana, target creature with Defender gains haste, can attack as though it didn't have Defender, and assigns its combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. And I can only activate this as a sorcery. But assuming that I do actually start going infinite with Staff of Domination, and I have infinite mana, I can also give my infinite creatures, or infinite creatures rather, that I just rattle off the top of my deck, haste and attack with them all. And I can also just use this to go and give something like an Axebane Guardian or an Overgrown Battlement haste, and that could end up being relevant as well. 
So we've got a couple angles of attack. Go infinite with Staff of Domination, hide like a coward behind an Searing Bridge, or randomly pop off with Arcades and draw a bunch of cards and actually have a decent amount of power. Um, given the low blue count of the deck list, I didn't reasonably think that I could run counter spells. And if I'm being honest, I don't think we're going to be faster than combo decks, just full stop. So I'm going to run a little bit of interaction in the, in the form of like Swords to Plowshares, Prismatic Endings, Path to Exiles, that sort of stuff. But generally speaking, I'm going to largely accept losses to combo unless one of these sideboard cards just really happens to steal the game. As far as the mana base goes, I didn't spend too, too much time tuning it. I think the Hedge Maze should be a Lush Portico, but Lush Portico was out of stock, and I figured, eh, good enough. Green mana is the primary color of this deck list. As long as I have the green mana to kind of get going with these, the, the rest will come with time, and I'm not sweating it too much. Ooh. With that being said, if we can win a match today, I'm going to consider this league a success. If we only get a game... Hey, at least we got a game. So let's see what we can do here. And if you decide that you need some walls to be a menace to your local metagame, or you need some uh, Outlaws at Thunder Junction cards, check out toamagic.com. That's Tales of Adventures. They support me and other great content creators. And if you're looking to get everything in one place, whether that's power, dual lands, new cards, TOA Magic has it all. And you get it in one envelope from one retailer instead of from a bunch of people. You can use promo code THRABENU to save a little bit on your order. And uh, let's, I guess not battle, let's defend. I need green mana. I am on the draw with a Wall of Omens as a redraw. But I think with four green cards here, I just don't risk it. Uh, whereas this is perfectly fine. Do I, do I get rid of this? If I get rid of this, I'm going to shuffle. There will be, what, six effective copies of it in there? I don't remember how many Trinket Mages I had. I went through a couple drafts. Uh, I guess let's look for effective copies of it. I guess I'll keep that then. Uh, let's put one wall back. The Urza Saga tokens don't matter while they're small, but they will matter later on. Sphere of Resistance lands. Uh, that's actually quite annoying right now because it knocks me off curve for playing out these walls. And I don't have the third land. Um, end of my next turn, I can just fetch. Fuck. Not anymore, I can't. Uh, anyway, fetch the Surveil land and try to select for the third land. We're gonna get bodied. These things are already just bigger than my walls. Um, I think I'm not going to crack the fetch land here. Yeah, that's fine. I think I am just dead a high enough percentage of the time to these cards already with my opponent starting with the sphere and then putting 10 power into play that I just, like, should not give, holy fuck, my opponent extra information. Um, I am going to go ahead and concede. My opponent just fully got under us. Lands starts on average are probably not going to be that fast. Um, but here we are. And Ensnaring Bridge isn't an out because of the sphere there. Rough. All right, I probably want to consider Rest in Peace to shut off the graveyard-based nonsense. I probably want to consider some extra Path to Exiles or Prismatic Endings to help with tokens as I just got overrun by them. But I have zero effective games with this deck to see what it is that I should be cutting here. I assume going down one or two copies of Arcades is correct here because my opponent is a Caracas deck and has the ability to tutor for it. So we're going to be looking to win with like a Walking Ballista or a Staff or just attacking with a large number of 2-2 creatures. I think for the game that I'm on the play, I'm just going to do two Rest in Peace and the game where I'm on the draw, I'll do two Path to Exile to help with Merit Lage. Um, well, Ensnaring Bridge, I guess, is how I don't die, so I guess we keep. Unfortunately, I guess the jig is up on turn one as I uh, play my defender and reveal my archetype. But I can start the game on three basics and then go from there. Yes, yeah, this guy again. Err. Uh, sphere is very obviously annoying. All right, well, we've got a plan. Let's get haste. 
Send it on in for three. Bonus is at 17. So now we're potentially facing down construct tokens very quickly here. Hey, a wall. Um, that's largely good. I do want to be emptying my hand for ensnaring bridge purposes. All right, well, the good news is we'll have three of them, so one force of vigor doesn't take care of it all. So we've got that going for us. Ooh, my opponent is floating mana here, which potentially means that they are about to just make a 2020 that gets stuck behind in Staring Bridge. Okay, there's map. Sure. So that's paying for the tax of Sphere with the Urza Saga mana. Life from the Loam. Boseju, Ghost Quarter, Urza Saga. Uh, Boseju is really fucking annoying. Because that will long-term just beat my pile of ensnaring bridges. That is most unfortunate. Ghost Quarter is also just strip mine. Because I have all my basics. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully just dead to that. That's really disappointing. Alright, I, I will concede. But I, I can't beat just repeated Boseju every turn uh, without having brought in Rest in Peace. Today's video is sponsored by TopDeck.gg. They're an awesome company that runs an awesome tournament series. If you would like to play for prizes such as Time Twister, check out the Top Deck Championship Series. It's run using their patented Command Tower software, which is awesome for EDH events, although you can use it for anything. Your players can scan QR codes and then get real-time standings and seamless pairings for their event. If you're looking to step up your local tournament game, check them out. All right, I have kept kind of a medium hand here. I'm mostly hoping that I just kind of like draw a castable wall that I can play either on turn two or turn three, and then I think the hand is reasonable, at least by standards for this deck. Uh, we're hoping not to be playing against combo. The mulligan to five uh, is a little scary. Okay, we're just doing lands again which we have already determined is going to be rough. Uh, there is a redraw, so that's some good news. Sure. I guess once I'm on four mana, I can just start punching my opponent for seven. Arcades is dead for this hand because of Caracas. Oh, it's not lands. Sure. I guess we'd like to go infinite before my opponent just knights up stage and I die. Don't think that's happening? Ah, fuck. No, I just die on my next turn. And I don't think a... No, I could I could draw a removal spell. So I guess, like, we can do this hit a path, or, or no, sorry, it has to be swords. I am one mana short of that. Damn. So I, I presume that my opponent goes for it here, and I just die. Yeah, all right. One mana away. So, this is slightly different from last time, in that there's going to be more creatures here. I think so that the Elvish Reclaimers and Knights and stuff are, are like, more blockable. I think I do this, and I think I want these. What do I get rid of? I have no idea. Tutorable Caracas is some shit. <laughs> just running into that two rounds in a row means that one of the things that my deck is built around just doesn't work. Ugh. All right. Uh, we'll win by going infinite or attacking with a bunch of hasty creatures. Uh, yeah, sure. Ath versus swords is a little awkward here. Cool, it looks like we're gonna luck out here and not have to just use a path immediately. I wish this was Lush Portico, but I already said that in the deck deck, so here we are. Bridge. I'm gonna go guaranteed mana here. And then hope next turn to Wall of Blossoms into, like, a land. and Okay, opponent's got a slower hand. Leave mana available versus not leave mana available. I think I want to leave path available. So I think I'm going to do this and potentially have one less mana than I otherwise could. Artifacts and creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. First of all, how dare you come in my house? and try to stop the triggered abilities of my walls. How dare you? Uh, it was not a land. Sure, sure, sure. Green sun for one. Is it a reclaimer, or is it a shroudy dude? 
It is a shroudy dude. Sure. Five mana to work with this turn. I think that just means walking Ballista. So we'll do this for two. We'll attempt to ping and kill Sylvan Safekeeper. Legolas's quick reflexes. Uh, yeah, you got it. So that fizzles that. I can try again on my opponent's turn. I can also just wait till my own turn, put a counter on this. Uh, it's a little weird because my opponent has flagstones, which is a great land to like sacrifice with this. I don't really want to four mana funnel into this. I think despite the fact that I'm giving up some value, I'm just going to try to kill this. And then let's try to kill it just one more time here. All right, they are very aggressively fighting this. My opponent gets a savannah and the stack clears. I think for color reasons, I just do it like this. I pick up a land, and let's get this going. Our opponent crop rotations. I'm gonna fire off a swords to plowshares in response. All right, my opponent does go down another land. So we have the 2020 covered, if my opponent can produce it. Uh, sure, that's fine. Another flagstones mean that the Sylvan Safekeeper is pretty good. And Yavamaya does some serious work for my opponent as well. Hot removal not doing the best out here. So I'm a couple walls away from going infinite with staff. I think I'm just going to pull out a second ensnaring bridge and pass the turn. Yeah, this is why we got rid of Arcades. Sure. Uh, so my opponent can churn through various lands in their deck now. Uh, this card doesn't do a lot right now. We're just going to sit on it. Axbane Guardian. We are at four walls. So when my opponent sacrifices that, I'm going to use that as an opportunity to see if they will let me kill the Sylvan Safekeeper. They do not. All right, they are going to still try to put together a Dark Depths-based kill, uh, which I'm fine with. Now, if their last card is just, like, Force of Vigor... Fuck me, I guess. We have dodged a bullet. So now we're just chilling until I draw something that lets me do something broken, or at least resembling something broken. I don't know that anything in this deck qualifies as broken. Do your thing. You can start wastelanding me if you want. Mana is not really a concern anymore, because Axe Pain Guardian makes mana in any color. And it is the wasteland that they're going for. Which is fine, like they can try to cut me off white, at least as far as the mana base is concerned. They can Thespian Stage, copy the Wasteland too. I don't, I don't think the Wasteland stuff puts me in any amount of real danger. Now if they can Wasteland me into Oblivion and also get rid of Axbane Guardian, then we can talk. Uh, green Sun for three, sure be some sort of reclamation sage type card hopefully not a planeswalker like grist all right end of turn again wish that was a lush portico uh yeah no that's fine we'll put that on top burija perfectly normal game of legacy nothing to see here move along folks yeah yeah you got it sure and I'll keep that land in play. That just represents a uh, white mana that's not tied to Axbane Guardian. Um, my opponent could be activating Knights and Reclaimers a little more aggressively to like thin their deck. Any one of those individually doesn't really matter. Uh, but all of them together might. Uh, so we'll get, grab some random white source. And we'll hopefully chain this together into a couple of cards. Hey! Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Make a bunch of white. All right. He's a green this time. Uh, that represents a basic. I'm just going to pull that basic out of my deck now because I know I want it. All right. Now we are seeing some knight activations. And notably, knights can sacrifice fetch lands for other fetch lands to thin the deck because of Yavamaya. And then Elvish Reclaimer can get rid of a land to get some other land. And my opponent can pull all the lands out of their deck relatively quickly. Your Maze of Ith, eh? 
who knows i might attack eventually you don't know um i have a whole bunch of creatures to go through oh that was an overgrown battlement not a wall of blossoms oops yeah it's whatever and then i imagine we are going to see a similar chain of night activations as deck thinning oh the yavamaya is gone sure oh for a new yavamaya okay makes sense and heath turns into stage stage can become another wasteland you want to come at me now at this point i don't really want these lands anymore <laughs> my opponent says i foolishly just realized the outs i thought i had were actually in my sideboard whoops sorry all right we have a game win because our opponent uh, i presume the outs that they are talking about are copies of force of negation uh yeah so i i think i am keeping things as in a again arcade is very bad versus the deck that has a ton of tutors for caracas uh this is perfectly fine my opponent has kept their six. They don't have a turn one creature, which is honestly great for me. This means that we can just lead on forest and put our first creature into play, and then we can decide whether or not we're playing um, hate cards or a cantrip next turn. I ultimately just want to get to three mana, get this in play, and then like I'll start to feel good. Uh, which means I am cantripping this turn. I'll cantrip off of Wall of Omens. I'll always have this green mana. Hey! That's rude. We talked about this last game. Yeah, you can take your one damage. I can't remove this and do something else in the same turn, which is, like, kind of awkward. Something like Endurance might just be coming end of turn. I think I have to hold up Swords to Plowshares and just, like, not do a mana-efficient turn, unfortunately. Sure. Eh... Uh, you got it. I'm very happy that I am not getting wastelanded. I think I'll now fire this off. And then this resolves. There's my third mana. I think what I'm going to do doesn't matter. I think this is Legolas's quick reflexes. It just makes sense to me that it is. Yeah. That's what I thought. So do I want to Wall of Blossoms or Rest in Peace right now? I think I want to redraw towards more land. Uh, fantastic, that's very, very good. Because some portion of the time I just get double wastelanded right now. And then this just immediately gets me out of that. Oh, life from the loam too. Um, maybe this was supposed to be fetching an island because this represents uh, a tropical island. I think that was a mistake on my end. Yeah, that was. Echoing Deeps and Thespian Stage. I I still think I'm doing okay. Um, but like I could have an overgrown battlement in play right now that just threatens to just bust this game open before Merit Lage comes down and kills me. Uh yeah, I might lose for not fetching Island there. Sure. Uh yeah. Yeah, I, I think I lost this one for not going for Island, because that gets me overgrown battlement in play, followed by an ensnaring bridge followed by a second ensnaring bridge. All right, I think I punted that one. That was winnable. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists, and they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands, and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. Hand has ensnaring bridge. Uh, let's keep and hope it works out. Basic island ponder. Sort of an ambiguous opener. Not sure when I play hedge maze. I think I play it on turn one and just get it out of the way. I am totally fine with fourth land drop in case I get wastelanded. Double island... Play Island before Ponder? That's presumably playing around in days. Um, but multiple islands here like this is starting to give me, like, show-and-tell vibes. So that's a thing. Uh, let's fetch. Just need anything with white mana here. Uh, we'll grab a savanna, I guess. I think I'm going to get two creatures out of my hand right now. Doesn't seem like my opponent has counter magic. 
So there's this weird thing going on here where if my opponent is show and tell, I'm like totally fine. Just third basic island. So it's like mono blue show and tell high tide are things that my opponent reasonably could be. Sure. I think I am saving and snaring bridge to put in off of a show and tell. I think we're going to do this. All right. I'll intend on doing a fetched, uh, what is it, Spara's headquarters at end of turn. Yeah, this is looking like mono blue show and tell. In which case, we might just randomly win games with ensnaring bridge off show and tell. I can also just start attacking my opponent for seven, which is currently my plan. Yeah, you can attack and you can attack. Seven? All right. Impulse is fine. So we're more afraid of my opponent being an old build that has like cunning wish for an alternative win condition such as release the ants than we are just omniscience into emrakul. All right, it is show and tell time. I have a bridge. You have an omniscience. Can you win from here? Fuck, they're the cunning wish build. They can beat this. This is Firemind's Foresight, which can get them another Cunning Wish plus two cantrips, uh, as expected. All right, they're not just immediately going for something like release the ants off Cunning Wish, so that's a thing. All right, a couple cantrips later, we are at the next Cunning Wish, which gets shared summons. My opponent can search for an Emrakul and like an Atraxa or a Grizzlebrand or something. All right, it's an Emrakul. You can have your extra turn. It's irrelevant until you like Ottawara and Ensnaring Bridge or otherwise produce another win condition. That is a handful of cantrips followed by pass the turn. We're still in it, baby. Um, I can attack for three points of damage. That's not good enough. Does this tap a creature? That's kind of hilarious. It does. Okay. So my opponent has six cards in hand. They are cards that don't kill me, so presumably like a Force of Will is one of those. So I think I use Staff of Domination to bait a Force of Will and then actually try to resolve uh, an ensnaring bridge next turn. All right, it's in play. Cool, I can now gain one life. And I will. And I will. So now this can keep this Emrakul tap down and I can just like draw cards at end of turn or whatever. Uh, so I think I am safe for the time being and then once i have a little bit more mana like once i i literally have one more land i can do other things i'll draw a card <laughs> nice emra cool nice emra cool all right what the fuck am i doing in this matchup uh lavinia is not bad lavinia is like pretty respectable versus omniscience swords the plowshares not really doing things here Path to Exile for my own creatures, question mark, question mark, question mark. And it has the upside of randomly hitting something like a Vesuvian, what is it, Vesuvian Shapeshifter? No, Vesuvian Drifter that could come in out of the sideboard. Actually, maybe I don't want to Path to Exile my own creatures because the count matters for Axbane Guardian and Overgrown Battlement. Okay, um, I'm just going to keep two swords to plowshares for a sideboard juke then. I don't have an Ensnaring Bridge in this hand which is kind of the card that matters in this matchup. So I'll mulligan. I'll mulligan again. I have an ensnaring bridge. I will keep my hand. Is there awkwardness with this hand? You bet your ass there is. But I, again, I, I, I think ensnaring bridge is just the card that I need to have every single game to be competitive. My opponent knows it's coming. Like it doesn't get to just automatically happen this time. Uh, like as a surprise element. Uh, we'll do this one tapped so that I can actually cast a two drop next turn. Cool. Uh, I have to keep in mind that back to basics is a thing that could happen from my opponent's side of the battlefield. That's a reason to play infinite islands. I'll just get like planes here and do the battlement. Oh, nice. No end of turn cantrip or anything. Cool. One, two, play all of Wall of Omens, it resolves. One, two, play Wall of Blossoms, that seems fine. Yeah. Would you like to counter my Wall of Omens? Dress down. Uh, uh, sure. That denies me a card draw, but I don't really think it's a problem. 
I'll just do this and scry. Um, sure, that's fine. Battlement tapping and just like allowing these to turn into real threats is like very much a thing. So let's go one and two. Play a wall of omens. Draw a card. So we'll fetch. Get a forest now, I guess. Play wall of blossoms. Five mana. Use one of it for a bulwark. Give it haste. Gains haste. I'll activate on one wall of omens. I'll activate on another wall of omens. Go to combat. Attack for eight. This is a real clock. Is it intuition time? It is cunning wish time. Or intuition. Intuition can get show and tell or whatever it is that my opponent is missing. Um, but I think my opponent just dies on their on my next combat step. I haven't mathed it out yet. I uh, look. I won a match, and I should have won the last one, but I punted. We might have put together something passable here. Here we go. We have a one, two, three curve. I've got ETB tapped lands, which is a little awkward. So that probably knocks me off my curve by one. So it's probably turn two, walking bulwark. Um, we may kind of accidentally end up playing around days here. I don't want that right now. I just want more lands because I'm assuming that I'm playing against a Delver variant. And I just want to respect Wasteland, which is going to be particularly good versus my tapped lands. Smells kind of like Delver or Beans. Beans it is. So does my opponent's deck have black in it or Bowmasters? Let's take, let's try to stay on curve here and take a card draw while I 100% know that it's safe. Okay, cool. So we've got lands for days now. Plus, my cards are embarrassing to use removal spells on. So like, what is my opponent going to do? Swords to Plowshare is a wall of blossoms? I think not. Now let's pick up some white mana. I think I'll do it off a of basic. We'll see if I can have an Axe Bane Guardian live. We do. For sure, sure. Edge Maze? Or Meticulous Archive or Equivalent? Or am I actually just getting swords? I'm actually just getting swords. Uh, that's fine. No individual creature that I have matters all that much. I can play Bulwark, activate, play a tapped land. Or I can play a Bulwark. If a Bulwark gets countered, I play Axebane Guardian. All right. Wall of Blossoms. You're hasty, bruh. No. Ah, sure. I do get my attack off with this. But you're down for life, opponent. You've only got 15 more. Never mind the fact that a whole bunch of cards in your deck now triple cantrip. We'll ignore that part. My opponent has tapped and untapped mana. Um, I think they have a Murktide Regent in hand. So we'll cantrip. How rude. Sure, I'll just use this as an opportunity to drop an Axe Bane Guardian then. Oh, I can attack. I can attack. Aha! Got him. Uh, yeah, sure. Life from the Loam, getting back Flooded Strand. Okay, so I do need to uh, respect uh, Wasteland Recursion. That's something that we already hedged against a little bit earlier. Xander's Lounge now gives everything, right? So we've got Grixis plus Trop. Eh, Sword's probably not doing a lot. So if this resolves, it just represents 4, 8, 9, 10, 11 immediate damage. I don't think this resolves, but... I am very willing to be wrong. That's the triple cantrip. And now we'll try to resolve another card. Okay, that one resolved. Staff of Domination represents a kill uh, in the not too distant future. But I think I'm just going to get an ensnaring bridge. Like, I think I need to respect just not dying to a giant fourth Aer Lingus or Murktide Regent or Triumph of St. Catherine. I think those things are all horrifying. This only helps so much because, like, prismatic ending is a thing, but I think this is fine. And I guess I could have considered attacking for two first. 
Solitude, that triple cantrips. We have, oh, it's Hedge Maze. Sure. I'll lose my Axebane Guardian here. That's kind of whatever. I think I'm just going to Swords this anyway. It doesn't really do anything, but I don't know that I want my opponent to just gain three life every turn without me having anything to say about it. Um, that card is much better targeted on like a Murktide region or Uro, but I think I would like to leave the possibility of just going and grabbing the Bulwark guy, I forget what its name is, and just hitting my opponent for lethal damage. Just in the cases where my opponent just kind of farts around and just cantrips a bunch but doesn't actually find meaningful spells. My opponent might discard a bunch here. Sure. What does opponent discard? Opponent discards the life from the loam. So I think we start here. We get that one countered, and we try to resolve this one. Yeah. Bah. Now this is just a matter of when does my opponent draw a win condition. Triple beans in play is real bad. But we'll see how long it is before my spirit is broken. Sure. One spell. One spell is the answer. I will concede. Uh, we're not technically dead to it this turn, but we're not realistically beating that. My Swords to Plowshares are kind of mid. My Ensnaring Bridges aren't that crazy. I probably still have to keep them. I think two Swords are going to become two Rest in Peace. They don't quite do the same thing, but it's pretty close. I could consider Prismatic Ending for Beans. I'd be perfectly happy with that. I think I'm going to do that over two Swords. I think I'm going to do that over two swords. It leaves me a little softer to Murktide than I would like. All right, uh, so we'll go land go and then start doing relevant cards from there. That's fine. Sure. Uh, let's battlement this turn because then next turn in theory I can double wall of blossoms. All right, we get swords. Uh, very much not the end of the world. Hey, it's my friend. Overgrown Battlement again. Then we'll pass. Um, and just for the sake of saying it, uh, this sh the land should have come before I cast that spell. Days is a thing that exists in this format. All right, my opponent can potentially shuffle soon for this brainstorm. I think I'm going to rattle off two spells this turn rather than just the one Axebane Gar Guardian. The Axebane Guardian isn't doing me a ton until I fetch with Trophy Mage as well. So I, I think I'm just going to get these into play. Sure. Uh, Uro is actively good, but I can Trophy Mage for Ensnaring Bridge. That's a lot of land. Attempt Trophy Mage. Yuck. Scry. We're just looking for any piece of gas here. That is a land. I'll pass turn. We have failed at getting something like rest in peace in play to stop that Uro. And with our swords in our sideboard, we're now looking for an ensnaring bridge to stop this. I can take some hits from it in the short term, but you know, Uro's a four turn clock. A little less if I start using these fetches. Wall? Oof. That is rough. We have all the mana in the world. I'm going to start taking these hits for life and try to avoid losing creatures because it matters for the Axebane Guardian infinite. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fetch. 14 versus 13 is no real difference. Going down one more from this, though, starts to matter. Why is everyone and their mother doing, like, dress down and dress down creature things? It makes me sad. I just want to draw cards. Is that a crime? There's an outlaw at Thunder Junction crime mechanic joke here. Yeah, well, obviously. Obviously, we're going to get in for three creatures worth of damage here. Because that joke is never not going to be funny. All right, I'm going to take six more. These arrow triggers are so, so much card advantage. My big issue here is that, like, my good top decks aren't going to beat my opponent's cards. 
like force of will and ley line binding both beat this for example like this is what i want this is kind of conceptually my plan but i think this just gets ley line binding and then i am in the abyss and i lose one creature every turn which walks me further and further away from the combo yeah but now i start losing walls my opponent has a sort like two sources of card advantage in play and i'm just like ugh, going to be outside of range of killing them if i top deck the one mana artifact dude like i can activate three times that's only 12 damage that's probably not even a three turn clock by the time i draw one with the beanstalk in play this is probably the point where i can just realistically say that it's not happening my opponent says hello and says that there's not enough Winota on the old YouTube channel. Um, my hand's a little high variance in that, like, it's pretty reasonable if my opponent is playing a creature-based deck, and if they are not playing a creature-based deck, uh, we do a lot of nothing. Beans? Oh, cephalid breakfast, sure. Um, I, like, really just want a walking ballista this. Just like die sometimes for doing that, but it's really what I want to do. Ah, uh, I am so not ready for that card yet. We have not, I think, cast or done anything with an Arcades yet, unfortunately. And this is round five, so this is the last chance, and we're playing against combo. Ping. Again, I want this to be Lush Portico. If this is Lush Portico, I have double swords available in the not-too-distant future instead of single swords. My laziness has definitely mattered. Ew. Swords. Uh, fantastic. Everything is just working. Spells are resolving. All right. Trophy Mage 4 in Snaring Bridge is a thing, I guess? Uh, sure. I've got another swords. Hey, don't you Shuko me. Fuck. <laughs> All right, uh, so we're 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 dead to that. My uh, my opponent will mill their library and dread return a Thassa's Oracle. Uh, we've seen this song and dance before. I'm going to go ahead and concede. So I can endurance away a Thassa's Oracle. I can rest in peace away a Thassa's Oracle. I can path to exile and prismatic ending away creatures. How do we feel about Ensnaring Bridge? I think I'm bringing in enough cards that I probably have to get rid of my Ensnaring Bridge. It means that I'm going to be worse versus Urza Saga tokens. But like, I think this is going. I think Arcades is a very slow tap out card here, and it like breaks my heart to get rid of this after building the deck around it and it not doing anything all league. But I believe it is tactically correct to do so. Like, I still need three more cuts here if I'm going to play all of this interaction. I guess I cut the Trophy Mages. They're only tutoring for two cards at this point. And we probably end up just playing fair, walking, bulwark magic the vast majority of the time. Which is a sentence that I just said. Sure. I don't think I'm supposed to, like, null rod in addition to what I already brought in. Bulwark. We're in there. So in this matchup, I'm going to value taking creatures out of play very highly. I can't be dazed right now. I think I just jam rest in peace. I'm not 100% sure. White blue. I think I just jam this. All right, someone was honking outside, seeing if I had a package or something. Saga is happening. Stoneforge is happening. Still can't be dazed. Not particularly good at multi-spelling unless I draw another land. Uh, let's just take out this Stoneforge. Call it a turn. We're safe against the combo. And now we've just got the fair side to worry about. The Urza Saga tokens are only going to be 3-3s? Three That's not that bad. I guess my opponent could get Shuko and make one of them a four power thing and then they get through the walls. All right. I can maybe not wait on this. So let's take this out. I don't think I remove this immediately, though. I think I'll hold up the swords. I need more mana. Oh, they need mana. Sure. 
Uh, you got it. Uh, this is really awkward because this source of plowshares is currently dazable in a way that my other spells this game haven't been. So I think I am supposed to wait till my turn. Two swords, which means that I don't do another spell unless I draw a land. So get out. And then we'll start playing walls. And my game hopefully smooths out a bit from here. Your Cabal Therapy resolves. Good luck. <laughs> I commend you, opponent. That was a good name that is not currently in my deck. I don't remember if I showed them the Arcades in game one. I don't think I did. I think they just knew. All right, would I like to smack my opponent for seven? Honestly, I don't think so. I think I'm just going to play two cards here. I, I think I would enjoy just getting deeper into my deck. Like, if I play an Axebane Guardian, I can just, like, start attacking with all of my creatures in a single turn rather than just, like, committing to seven damage for four mana for the rest of the game. Upkeep Step Through for a Thassa's Oracle. Thassa's Oracle in hand is a little scary because now if my opponent can get another Cephalid Illusionist... They can win from hand if they can just kind of like four mana do it all in one turn. All right. So we'll Axe Bane, target a wall. Oh no, I fucked up. I'm supposed to target this, tap this, it makes five mana, and then I can attack with two. I missed four points of damage here. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. Oh, that's fine. Five? Hello? Staff of Domination? <laughs> Let it resolve. No. All right. Um, do I want to attack with the Bulwark? I've activated targeting these three. The Bulwark could technically be blocked by all three and then be killed, and then I can't attack anymore, so I guess not. So this is 12 incoming damage. My opponent just absorbs that. So my opponent could be at nine instead. Okay. I think my four... Points of damage mattered. 4, 8, 12, 15. 1, 2. I can get 3 activations. That's 12. This doesn't get me another activation, so I do have to tap this. So we'll do this on all of my creatures, uh, including the Bulwark this time. And my opponent will have to block one of these. Uh, so if I had not missed my 4 points of damage, uh, my opponent would be dead here, or at least would have to block with another creature. Uh, so we're going to hedge maze, trying to find another piece of interaction. That goes to graveyard. I know my opponent's got some equipment in hand that is junk. Hey, we bring it to another game. That was scary. Um, I don't think I am adjusting my sideboarding here. Like, I could Null Rod or Stony Silence specifically for Shuko. But those get in the way of my Staff of Domination and Walking Ballista, so I don't think I'm actually on board with that. Uh, this is a perfectly reasonable hand. We have spot removal. I have a way to interact with a graveyard if need be. Uh, this is just going to be a cantrip. That's fine. That means I can potentially, like, edge maze or whatever on turn one. Uh, Saga's fine. Uh, beating the dead horse. I kind of wish that I had the portico still. I think I'm just going to get the tri land here. I think my mana requirements are going to be strict enough this game. I specifically want green and white. I can die to the perfects if I don't hold up path and swords here. I am going to accept that and play the thing that advances my mana, and that is going to continue to allow me to play spells for the rest of the game. Uh, sure, that's fine. I do still have Endurance pitching Wall of Blossoms. And I guess, like, the green nature of the card is, like, maybe a reason to think about playing Wall of Omens that turn. But I think the mana advancement matters too much. Uh, this is a lot of interaction. I think I will just pass the turn with a bunch of spot removal spells up. Let my opponent make their creatures. Before my opponent fetches, I'll, like, fetch a... Probably a trop with Misty for variety. Don't want to get this pithing needled. I don't know, it's not like I ever need more blue. I guess I can just get Savannah and always have white, white, white available. Yeah, let's Savannah. And I think I'm just going to let this ability resolve, kind of see what my opponent is getting. 
before I decide if I'm going to fire off the swords. Path? I'm not sure how many basics my opponent plays, and to be honest, I don't want to look it up right now. Sure. So this one can be eaten by Endurance next combat, so I think I'm just like not going to use another spot removal spell and just make a land drop and pass. I just have multiple pieces of spot removal. Um, that's kind of annoying. Endurance doesn't trade with that cleanly anymore. All right. I guess the toughness doesn't change. Yeah. I guess I can still trade Endurance with it. Yeah, I think I'm fine with this. Is putting a Swords to Plowshares and an Overgrown Battlement back in my deck good? If it comes with two fetch lands? I don't think so. Yeah, let's just clear the board here. Hey, that's a good card. I am comfortable playing that now. I think I am too scared of death to just like tap out and go for the attack for four. Like I'd prefer to leave up two or three mana every turn for the rest of the game. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, fine. You got it. I think I'll do this. Axe Bane Guardian is very good. I'll do that next turn, though. I don't think I have to do it immediately. I'll just go ahead and bash in for four while holding up two removal spells. Uh, Saga's good. Saga's very good. I think I take the damage from this. The tokens are going to be bigger. Ooh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That changes things a bit. Now I don't have a clock anymore. I do have a giant pile of removal. And borderline infinite mana, though. Wizard cycling. A cephalid illusionist. And the Shukos are in play. So illusionist resolves. My opponent will target it with Shuko. And now I have a priority pass where I can go ahead and attempt to remove this. Triumph. All right, we mill the Thassa's Oracle. Do I need to remove this? I think I have enough removal in my deck where I do just remove this and stop taking the hits from it. Sure. <clears throat> so I'm looking for... Oh, I need to fetch, I guess, with this here before this goes off. So I am looking for gas. Uh, redraws are fine. Ooh... That's a new illusionist. Um, here's hoping no, like, force of negation. That's what this could represent. All right, opponent's looking. All right, we got it. Ooh, and I think we just milled a cephalid illusionist. That is quite good for us. It is becoming less likely that we just die to a combo. And maybe we can execute our own combo. Hey, love that. So I can do two activations, attack for eight, or I can do more than that. So we'll do this on all our various friends. Activate only as a sorcery. I feel robbed. Whatever, attack for four. So there's two cephalid tutors. Oh, wait, they're all gone. Illusionist, 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 illusionist. I do not have to fear the combo anymore unless my opponent has some sort of shuffle nonsense. Ah, uh, so Urza Saga, I guess, is kind of scary. We might deck my opponent. I think my bridges are in the sideboard, right? That was the first thing that I took out. Yeah, so my opponent can churn through their deck. Um, how many copies of Triumph is this deck realistically playing? Probably like two in the sideboard. There's also like Stoneforge for Cauldra and stuff. Eh, I'll hold that in hand. Yeah, I mean, I guess these attack for three a turn. That's not nothing. Hello, and welcome. Uh, one, two, three activations. One, two, three versus more than that. Target Wall of Omens. Ha ha ha, nice. So I don't actually want to attack with this. I don't want to lose this in combat. So we'll just attack with 12 points of power here. One of that too. No Miracle Triumph. Ooh, okay. It is still a game. Uh, 11. Guess I'll do this in my opponent's upkeep. Maybe their draw step in case um, Triumph is miracled. Yeah, I, I think I have to just wait in case Triumph is miracled. And now I'll fire it off. 
Opponent's at four, which means that another attack with one of these is lethal still. Uh, lands are no good here. Fetching to thin is relatively marginal. My points of life might be more valuable than fetching to thin. Ugh. As a Narc Amoeba is a 1-1, one, one, 3 six, nine. Like, these additional points of health over 9 are a turn of the clock. Yeah, I think I'm not going to fetch to thin. Attempt lethal. Force of Will is something that it makes sense for my opponent to have right now. That is kicked, so my opponent makes me not be able to attack this turn. So they will they will get another turn. We dodge triumph. Ah! How many of those are gone? All right. I have three copies of Endurance that I can draw and attack my opponent with. I have Walking Ballista that I can just kill them with as well. Hey, it's Endurance. Sure. So my opponent has something castable, and they're debating whether or not they are casting it. I think end of turn I want to cast an Endurance, target myself, and put all these removal spells back in my deck, and then fetch once to shuffle. Oh, my opponent is just legit going to bounce some of my creatures? Why? Is it just for Axe Pain Guardian? These redraw. Cabal Therapy. I see. Figured it out. I still think I cast this Endurance right here. Well, Endurance, I'll target myself. <laughs> my opponent says I'm really about to get walled. Indeed. So I'll shuffle all those nice removal spells back into my deck, and I will attack for the last three points of damage. Yeah, my opponent says I was actually going to name Endurance with how you paused. I, I, yeah, I can't take that risk uh, of waiting any further. So I put up a 2-3 league that is probably a 3-2 league if I fetch Island instead of Tropical Island against Wasteland. All right, so how do we feel about the deck at the end of the league? Honestly, this went a lot better than I was expecting, but I think I misevaluated how good this card was. Like, I viewed this card as plant B, excuse me, because it requires a mana sink, when in actuality, like, this is definitely the deck's plan A. It's just, like, play out a handful of creatures, get an overgrown battlement or an Axebane Guardian, and all of a sudden start swinging for 12 per turn cycle. That is somewhat of a reliable plan. Um, it is hyper unfortunate that we played against just a bunch of decks that had tutorable access to Caracas that just totally invalidated this side of the deck. And we didn't draw it the other times where it would have been reasonable. Um, so I can't speak too much to this card. But I think if you want to do something like this, you turn Arcades into uh, is, is, is Assault Formation, the two-mana version on the green enchantment. If that one removes Defender and lets Defenders attack, I think you do that. Otherwise, the three-mana uh, blue-white one is something that you can play. Uh, the Ensnaring Bridge, I think, was good tech. I'm happy with that. A couple copies of Staff of Domination and Trophy Mage were, I think, reasonable. Uh, I'm not sure if I need the full 23 lands. I, I think I went a little heavy there. I'm not sure how much you can go down on it, though, because you do just have to, like, empty your hand for in Snaring Bridge, and, like, you do have Staff of Domination and Walking Ballista as mana sinks, so, like, you do need some critical amount of mana. Can you turn into a Chrome Box deck? I don't really know that that makes sense. I think you can turn this into something that has a reasonable shot at 3 twoing a league if you are a, a very good Magic player. Um, mistakes were incredibly punishing with this deck. Like, the, the deck is innately not that powerful, so, like, when you mess up and you misplay and you lose a little ground, like... It's not like when Delver messes up and you just ponder for the thing that you need to get yourself out of the situation. You, you, you don't have that luxury here. I think overall I am happy with how I built this. I think this was a good attempt at the challenge that I was given. And Plum Wizard, hopefully this bring, brought you some joy even though Arcades didn't make a good showing. And again, if you need some defenders for your next legacy FNM, check out toamagic.com and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. And folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya.